Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about what makes a good stretch canvas, but also more importantly, what would make a good stretch canvas for you. Because in addition to the things that go into constructing a stretch canvas, there are certain things that depending on the type of art you're doing, the type of medium you're using, and how thickly you're applying it, uh, there are different uh, preferences that you might want to explore. So we're going to try to cover a little bit of all that today uh, and get started with what goes into making a good stretch canvas in terms of the construction. So canvas either comes in cotton or linen, okay? Neither one is wrong. Uh, you know, most people, if they have a familiarity with uh, canvas, they'll say, well, linen is the higher quality. Uh, and it certainly reflects in the price. And there is some truth to that, but don't just immediately jump in and say, well, linen's for me. Uh, there are features and benefits to both, depending on the type of art you're doing. The other thing to uh, also consider is the stretcher strips. So what we'll do here is just kind of show you. You want to make sure that you're using a canvas that has a really high quality stretcher bar. Um, pine. Pine is generally a, a high quality wood. Uh, some of the uh, less expensive canvases you find out there are using wood that's not quite as durable as a, as a kiln dried pine. Uh, and then other things that you can look for is the, 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 the tightness of the canvas. When it comes to canvas, I've got an assortment of different canvases here. This is our practical canvas, so this is going to be sort of on the uh, less expensive end for studies and, and whatnot. We'll get into why these canvases exist in a minute. With that being said, let's talk about the canvas itself. Regardless of whether it's linen or it is cotton, uh, they are going to be different ounces. Okay, there's a lot of these things, these little nuances here. So generally speaking, the higher the ounce, the more resilient the canvas should be. Um, but there are little things that you got to keep in mind and consider, right? So here's a prime example. Right here we have this canvas, the edge, and it says it's 14 ounce primed weight, okay? That means that that's the weight of the canvas after they've applied the acrylic primer to it. This is an acrylic prime canvas. Uh, I'm not sure off the top of my head what the unprimed weight is of the canvas, but what you should keep in mind is this is triple primed um, canvas, and with triple priming, it's 14 ounces, okay? Now that's good, that's really good, that's solid. Now, I wanna then just kind of direct your attention over here to the Paramount Professional, right? This is a 15 ounce prime weight canvas, so one ounce more, but it's only double primed. So there's less primer, but it weighs more, which means the cotton itself uh, is a higher ounce cotton than the edge stretch canvas. Uh, at the end of the day, we're really, can start to matter is when it comes to things like restretching it, uh, how thick your paint application is. But either way, these are both quality canvases, but the Paramount Professional certainly has a higher ounce unprimed canvas. So, you know, don't be confused by, or uh, I don't want to say fooled by, um, canvas ounce. Make sure that you check that it's an unprimed versus primed weight. And uh, you want to see the difference of those two because, you know, somebody can have a, a a two ounce prime canvas and uh, put uh, 15 layers on it and say it's a you know 14 ounce canvas so that's a little insider thing there hope that doesn't further confuse you uh, I will say that um, to my the best of my knowledge the practica so this is a student grade canvas or a practice practica in the name is a five ounce canvas unprimed 10 ounce canvas primed so with that being said, you know that there's, you know, half of it is basically primer and half of it is canvas. So we're talking about what makes a good stretched canvas. So we should go a little bit more into the materials of the linen and the cotton because that is something that frequently people are confused about and there's uh, really just some very simple reasons why you would prefer one over the other or why one's more expensive than the other. Now, what are the features and benefits of cotton canvas. Okay, so let's turn this over. Um, all three of these are cotton. These two are linen. So we're going to look at the cotton here. Now cotton is flexible. Uh, cotton is uh, going to have a very uniform weave. It's less expensive than linen um, for the most part because it's mass manufactured where on linen side, they have to select it by hand. So that obviously adds cost to it. Um, you know, if, if a machine can do one thing and an actual person has to do another, that will add cost. You'll also notice it's very uniform, okay? Uh, with linen, it's a little less uniform. Again, doesn't have the same mass-produced texture. 
um, that uh, you'd find with cotton. And if you want a consistent canvas, which, you know, somebody like me, um, anybody that knows me knows I, I don't like surprises, uh, I tend to lean towards, you know, if, I, if I'm not actually in a store physically picking it, um, or I haven't purchased that particular brand of stretch canvas before, I know that with cotton I'm going to get the same thing every time. Uh, it's it's going to be almost always more uniform. Now when it comes to priming, one little test you can do to, to make sure that your primer is evenly distributed um, and, and also look for in a quality canvas is hold it up to the light. And what you're looking for is any light that's shining through. And I'm not seeing any here. Um, I don't know if that would be the case of the practical or not. I haven't uh, tested that yet. But sometimes some of these lesser expensive canvases, you'll see light shining through, and those are little pockets where a, uh, either the weave wasn't tight enough or the um, gesso wasn't fully distributed well. This is a very evenly well distributed um, canvas, and I don't see any of those light spots. So that is a good thing. Uh, the other thing about a stretch canvas is the outer lip. So what's creating that drum is the fact that the uh, canvas stretcher bar, uh, you want, as I said, a quality stretcher bar, usually pine is going to be your, your best bet, uh, kiln dried pine, is going to have this lip to it that the canvas is stretched over, which will give you that bounce. And that's something that artists look for in a canvas is that bounce. That's a different painting experience. Um, and that's a preference thing. You know, some people like to paint on panel. There's, there's no bounce. There's, it's, it's just like painting on a, a rigid piece of board. Uh, the canvas is, you know, mounted to that board. Where a stretch canvas is just something that, I don't know, has a different feel to it. And it's, again, preference uh, to what you like. Now, with that being said, let's talk about linen, okay? So as we already discussed, linen is going to be more expensive because it's picked by hand, not always as completely consistent in terms of um, the uh, final um, product because there are little inconsistencies in that, but some people really like those little nuances. Uh, with that being said, linen, on the other hand, can give you really, really plate smooth finishes because it's a lighter weight material than cotton. The fibers are longer. That's what makes it more archival. So if you look at like a cotton fiber, it would be considerably shorter than a linen fiber, which means that they can kind of like grasp onto a lot more. And then get a much tighter weave because they're not quite as bulky. So you can get a nice smooth finish um, with less coats of uh, primer than you could with something like a uh, cotton canvas. And you can also just see the differences there. It's a darker looking material. Again, I'm gonna hold this up to the light and we'll just ignore this corner because this is attached. And, um, but yeah, again, you know, I'm not seeing any light coming through in terms of little like pinholes or whatever. Uh, again, these are well-made canvases we're, <clears throat> we're looking at. So with that being said, let's look at something that's on a lower end. So let's look at the Practica canvas. These are for studies and whatnot. Now, why wouldn't I use this? Why wouldn't I just practice on paper? Or why wouldn't I just practice on a panel or something inexpensive? Why do I need to get a stretch canvas? Well, you don't. Um, but if you want to learn how to paint on stretch canvas, painting on stretch canvas is the best way to do that. And instead of investing a lot of money in a you know high-end canvas, if you're just practicing, you know, the price point of these is really great, and you're going to get that experience, that feel. You're going to get some of that bounce. You're going to get some of that, you know, painting um, nuance that you won't get from painting on a more rigid surface. You're going to have that similar experience. So let's look at this. You can see that this is a back stapled product, okay? So in the past, um, if you looked at stretch canvas, a lot of them, I think like all of Bob Ross paintings, they, they were side stapled. Um, you don't really see side stapling too much anymore. Uh, people like the clean edges, especially if they want to hang it without framing it. You just paint the edges. So when the staples are back stapled, it's a paintable edge. Everything you see here is going to be a paintable edge, although we do have one different kind, which is a spleen, which I'll show you right here in a second. Um, this is really great because this allows you to restretch. Now, I guess you could practice restretching if you wanted to with this um it's you know like i said it's a lighter weight canvas uh, with a heavy application of gesso um so you know it, it's meant for practicing so i wouldn't um you know create something on here and if you really like it try to stretch it and re uh, you know unstretch it and then roll it or restretch it you know if you if you create a masterpiece on this and you're like i love it don't worry it's it's not it's, it's still archival 
Um, I just probably wouldn't unstretch it and try to restretch it just to make sure everything stays as clean as possible. Um, but uh, these bars are probably not pine, but I'm not sure off the top of my head. Um, but uh, it's still, you know, good enough for practice, inexpensive, and a great way to get started on stretch canvas painting without investing in very expensive canvases. All the practical canvases come in packs of two. Um, and so, you know, the price per, per canvas is very low. So it's a great place to uh, get started if you just want to start playing around using a stretch canvas, regardless of whatever medium you're using, oil or acrylic. Okay, now we were talking about those paintable edges and how we had one that was different. So as we saw, these were back stapled. This right here has back stapling. Also, you can see it has a, a good amount of um, extra canvas. This is also important. You know, when they're when they're back stapled, the more canvas you have, the more margin of error you have if you restretch it once or twice. Um, just having more is good. Uh, but some people prefer uh, something called a spleen or a spline, uh, I guess depending on who you ask. Um, you can see this is completely clean. There's this gasket, kind of rubber gasket put in here. Um, and, and that makes it, you know, first of all, there's a few advantages to this. It will sit more flush against a wall because it doesn't have you know, these bulky pieces of canvas poking out. Um, also the corners, you know, we call it the edge canvas. <clears throat> There's less folds around the corners, so they generally look um, a little bit more smooth uh, where the canvas would have been folded over for a back stapled canvas, right? But of course the major drawback to using a spleen canvas is this is not restretchable. This is going to live on this canvas stretcher bar. Um, the only way around it is hoping that uh, your favorite part of it is much smaller than the canvas and you just kind of cut it out and restretch it on something like that. But um, for the most part, if you're painting on this type of canvas, it's not going to be um, restretchable. Okay, so now we've covered canvas, we've covered a little bit about linen. We should talk a little bit about primer. Now, this is something that's very important, especially as you're moving on to more advanced techniques. and. I think that there's a little bit of a, it's not a misnomer, but sometimes you'll read acrylic prime canvas and instead of acrylic prime, they'll use the term universal primed. And it is a universal primer, meaning you can paint acrylic on acrylic primer, universal primer, or oil on acrylic primer. Now, the thing is, if you're oil painting, you're probably already, you know, making a big investment in your art. If you want the best bang for your buck in terms of how that color is going to lay on that canvas and stay vibrant, you're going to want an oil-based primer. Okay, so that's what our Centurion OP uh, DLX is. This is an oil-based primer. So with this, you know, uh, this is oh, it's beautiful, very smooth finish, um, really nice bars. And even though there might be minor imperfections, you don't see it. Um, you don't see it on here. I mean, they're really well made. And you can even see kind of how beveled this is because the lip is really nice. Um, and this is oil primer. So the paint, the oil paint, will actually sit on top of that oil primer and not be absorbed in. So imagine if you're using watercolor on unsized um, paper. It dulls out. It The color just kind of gets sucked into the paper. Well, the oil paint, when you're painting on top of acrylic, will kind of seep into that acrylic primer. It won't do that with the oil primed. Okay, but the disadvantage to oil prime canvas is they are for oil only. Now, for the most part, if you're an oil painter, that won't be a problem. Oil painting, oil prime canvas. Now, some artists are multimedia though. They use some oil sometimes, they use acrylic sometimes. Sometimes they use both in one painting. But anybody that does that will tell you the best way to do that is to paint oil over acrylic, not acrylic over oil. So why is that? Well, it has to do with the science of how they bind together. And the oil will bind to the acrylic primer, but if you paint acrylic on top of this oil prime, it will flake off, it will start to peel over time because it's not gonna have a good adhesion. Now, some of, somebody's gonna put in the comments, I have painted acrylic on oil prime and I have had no problem. I will tell you that that is an anecdotal evidence-based comment. So there are always outliers that um, you know, hey, you, you, this didn't happen to you. Maybe you weren't painting very thick. Maybe it just worked uh, for whatever reason. You don't know if in the next 10 years or 10 minutes it might start to peel after you say that. 
Um, I'm telling you based on years of, of science and experience with these products that you will have a much more stable and safe work surface painting oil on top of oil, oil on top of acrylic, but never acrylic on top of oil. So even if you're a mixed media painter, you're not going to want to take your acrylic prime canvas, put down a layer in oil, and then put acrylic over it. Okay? doesn't work that way. You want acrylic on the bottom, then you worry about things like fat over lean with oil paint. There's a lot of little steps there and it can get confusing. Um, so I hope that that kind of helps you understand just the rule you can paint. I think that the, the cleanest way to remember it is acrylic on acrylic canvas, prime canvas, oil on oil prime canvas is just a good safe rule of thumb. Um, acrylic will shine beautifully on top of acrylic primed canvases and oils will shine beautifully on top of oil prime canvases. And if you're a mixed media artist, again, default to the universal or acrylic prime canvas, but make sure you're putting your acrylic layers down first, letting them dry, and then applying your oils, okay? I think that that point has been driven home. <laughs> now, I don't have an example up here, but you also want to look if you're, you know, all these examples are, I think, 16 by 20 is the largest I have up here, but as you know, canvases are available up to ginormous sizes, 48 by 48, 60 by 72. I mean, there's huge canvases that you can buy out there. Uh, another thing to look for in what makes a good stretch canvas is you want to make sure that as the sizes get larger that they are being braced with cross braces to support that larger size. So um, if you are looking at something that's, I don't know, anything probably bigger than 24 by 36, um, they should start having cross braces on them to give them extra support because as it gets bigger, this part gets awfully wavy. And, and and it needs those extra braces here, okay? So just keep that in mind and make sure that when you're purchasing them, there are notes that say they're cross brace. I believe that the Paramount Pro, um, anything up here that I'm showing you uh, in terms of the Centurion or the Paramount, uh, and I think even the Edge have cross braces. The uh, Practica doesn't come in sizes that large, so it's not really required. Um, now, some of you guys might have questions about stretching your own and using stretch bars. That's not really what this video is about. We're focusing more on a pre-made stretch canvas. But um, getting back to some of those features and benefits and talking about re-stretching, uh, a, downside, a downside of using linen is that it is very rigid and it's difficult to restretch. So unless you're an experienced artist that have uh, restretched canvas before, um, you'll want to learn how to do that with cotton before you start trying it with linen because linen is exponentially more difficult. So with that being said, keep that in mind. If you're going to be taking this off and rolling it up and restretching it later, you're probably, if you're new to it, going to want to have a buddy help you if you're using linen uh, that has some experience or get started with cotton because it's a lot more forgiving because as I said earlier in the video, it's a very flexible, um, you know, it's, it's cotton, you know, my shirt's made out of it. So many materials that we use every day are made of cotton and the linen is going to be more rigid, but it is more light uh, in terms of weight. So that's another advantage to it because of that lightness, you get that tighter weave and it also has, um, you know, more um, stability. So uh, one last thing I'll say about linen is that it's generally more archival um, both are going to last uh, well, well past your grandchildren's lifetimes. I wouldn't worry about that. Um, but the, the linen is really known for its archival qualities. You know, this one right here says, guaranteed to last 500 years. Um, these, are, these are the things that you paint on uh, when, you, when you're painting on linen. You're, it's sort of an investment in that piece that you're working on that it will be around a long time. Not to mention the fact that when it comes to painting, uh, generally speaking, if you're selling your art, a piece that's painted on linen could sell for more than a piece that's painted on cotton because people are looking for that archivalness. So that's, you know, one of the other checks towards why you might want to use a linen over a cotton. Okay? So what's right for you? Well, we've already discussed when it comes to primers what might be right for you. But in terms of canvas, ounce, um, width, I mean, these are, these are preferences. You know, here, this is a, a gallery wrap canvas, so we've got close to one and a half inches, um, I think it's one and six, 13 sixteenths inch deep. So this canvas is designed to hang on the wall unframed. Um, and it has a nice big edge that you can paint. That's preference. It doesn't mean it's a, a better quality product because it's thicker, it's just what you like. I mean, the edge, I think, comes up to like, we have them available up to like three inches because it's all about that edge, which we talked about why we spleen these. 
So keep that in mind as well. The other thing to think about is the um, type of artist that you are. Are you painting big, thick, impasto style paintings? You're going to want a beefier, a beefier, a thicker canvas to support that heavy paint. Uh, on the other hand, if you're doing something a little bit more delicate, like a portrait, right? Well, something like linen would be really great because you're getting that tight weave. It's going to have a much more um, smooth, uniform finish. And it doesn't need to support very heavy um, paint applications generally. You can still use acrylic, um, uh, and, and they can prime acrylic several times and, and get it smooth. Uh, you can also add some uh, gesso, then sand it. There's all kinds of little tricks to getting it smooth. Um, and, uh, and, and you won't have to worry, you can, you know, it will have that nice plate finish. But if you're using a heavier, thicker painting application, you definitely want to look for the, the higher end in terms of the um, canvas weight because it will support that heavier paint better because it's just a, a better surface for it to rest on, if that makes sense. When you talk about practicing and, and on canvas versus panel, and I talk about that, you know, you become a drummer with that bounce. Well, if you take a brush, right, and I guess I'll just go back to this practica here. Now, generally speaking, when you're acrylic or oil painting, you're using a long handle brush. Generally, it's not going to be horizontal. It's going to be um, up on an easel or something. That's why it's long handle, so you can kind of stand back from it. But just for simplicity and so that Will can get the shot, you know, what you're going to see here is when I put the brush down, first of all, you see that the canvas has some bounce to it. Right, and that bounce transfers to the bristles. That's part of the painting experience. And if you're used to painting on something, and I'm just going to go right over here, that's rigid, there's no bounce. Okay, it might seem very minor, it might seem very nitpicky, and it kind of is. But this is how you develop your artistic style. It's sort of like you're trying to learn to write your name. If you're trying to learn to write your name with a crayon on a rock, it's not going to look the same when you finally get a pencil to paper. Right, you have to learn on the right tool that you plan on using with the right tool that you're going to be using. So again, it's it's not quite that dramatic of an analogy of painting with, you know, writing with crayon on rock versus pencil on paper, but I think you get the idea where I'm not going to have the same nuances. I'm not going to have the muscle memory that I will need to then transfer to a stretch canvas. And that's the beauty of these practicas. Inexpensive, you're going to get that ability to paint on real stretch canvas. And if you make something you like, you can keep it. I, again, I, I don't want to speak too much to the restretching. You can restretch. It is backstapled. Um, but just know that this is a considered a practice canvas. So I would probably say the less you handle it after you create that masterpiece, the longer it will last you. And it is archival. It is acid free. So keep that in mind, even the practical canvas. So I hope that's helpful. I know that's a lot of different information. You know, a canvas is something that there's so many different things involved between uh, the material that's being used in the uh, canvas itself and cotton and linen and primer and stretcher bars and stapling and um, splines or splines, whatever you call them. Uh, is, there, is there a proper word for that? Spline. Spline? Okay. Spline is... So whether it's a spline or a spleen or whatever you want to call it, uh, I, I think it's actually spline. But um, so whether it's a spline or a spleen, whatever you want to call it, I, I, the, the term is actually spline. Um, that is an option for you if you want it to sit. I mean, these will sit flush against the wall. Like, they really can. Uh, beautifully flush. Most of the times when you look at framed artwork, um, they'll have a little, and again, this is getting nitpicky, there'll be a little gap, a little separation where the top's kind of like coming slightly forward, and that's because of all the, you know, extra bulky canvas and probably the way it was... Um, you know, put on a, a, a picture wire hanger. So these will really set up nice and flush against the wall. And especially when you're getting to those bigger, thicker ones, like the three inches I was talking about, that will be very dramatic if, if it had just even the slightest tilt forward because it's got so much uh, width to it that even just the slightest bit will make somebody be like, oh, is this thing falling off the wall? Um, not so much with the three quarter inch, but with those wider ones, absolutely. So there is, again, advantages to all this depending on the type of artwork you're doing. Um, my advice, if you want to start painting and you're an acrylic painter uh, and you want to start using something that is uh, high-end, uh, our Paramount's a great option. Uh, it, these are the universal acrylic primed. These will be working for your acrylics and oils if you want to do both. Um, but if you want to start painting in 
oils, I highly, highly, highly recommend using oil primed canvas if you're going to be using oils exclusively. And the Centurion line is gorgeous. Again, the Centurion's all linen, so the only real difference between these two um, is basically the fact that um, this is oil primed and this is uh, acrylic primed. They are both linen, back stapled, high quality pine stretcher bars, nice lip on them, nice bounce to them, really, really well made stretch canvases. Okay, so I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, if you want to see future what makes a good fill in the blank, uh, leave some comments and suggestions below. I always take them into consideration. Please like the bell. Uh, like the bell. <laughs> so what other things would you like us to explore? What makes a good fill in the blank. Leave it in the comments below and we'll uh, always take that in consideration for future videos. Uh, if this video is helpful, please hit that like button for us, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell to be notified when we post future videos. That helps us create this content for you. And we will see you on another What Makes a Good. Well, it's up to you. Put it below.